Hello my beautiful magical beings, welcome to my channel Moonlight Royalty, it's your girl Cindy. In today's video, I want to talk about what I've been reading in this book called The Untethered Soul. You might have heard of it, it's really popular. And so far it has made an impact on my life and I want to share what I've been learning with you so that way you could also apply it and it could assist you on your journey as well. Because I know when I was younger, I wish I would have heard this and I wish I would have applied this. So yeah, let's just get started. So first of all, being a human is hard. It's hard. I know, I get it. It's 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 it can be very very hard. But that's what that's what being a human is. You know, we came here to experience, we came here to feel, to love, to laugh because I don't know if you know this or not, but there's a uh, there's a whole world out there besides just here on earth and I've heard that outside of here like you don't really feel and I'm not really sure if that's true or not, but it can be very hard to be a human especially when we go through certain things and trauma especially. So because of certain things that has happened to us most of the time at least for me that's how it was for me most of my life i feel like i was a zombie i felt like i was sleepwalking i wasn't really living my life it was kind of like i was watching my life from a couch you know like i was watching tv and life just kind of happened to me instead of me living life there has always been a strong desire of freedom of being free to be myself freedom from external um, expectations from other people, from society, just freedom in the aspect of being whoever I want to be and doing whatever the fuck I want to do. You know, we all we all have that. We have this birthright and also this desire to be free, to be liberated. And like I said, it's hard sometimes because of things that we have gone through. So here's the truth. So the truth is that we are consciousness. What is consciousness? It just means that we are aware. We're aware that we're aware. It is the seat of ourself, the seat of us. Um, so we are all, we all come from source. We all come from the infinite. Um, and we are all part of God. Whatever higher power you believe in, we all come from the same source. And we come here in our own individual persons and we have a separate our own consciousness but yet we are all one and it's kind of hard to explain but anyways you know you understand what i'm saying that we are consciousness we are not just this human body we are more than just that we have souls so yeah, so consciousness is your seat of yourself. To keep it going, I also want to mention that we are made up of energy. Um, and it's kind of hard to believe because, you know, I like watching TV shows and uh, magic and all this different thing. Like legit, my thing that I call my audience is magical beings. Like I, I believe in magic and uh, I'm a baby witch. I'm learning different things, the law of attraction. And if you're here, it's probably because you're into that stuff too. But but anyways, we are energy and we have chakras inside of us and what chakras are, we have their energy centers within us and each one has its own different purposes, its own different functions and what happens, like I mentioned earlier with the trauma, um, when we experience something, that trauma, if we don't process it, if we don't release it, it stays inside of the body and we don't want to live like that. We want to live from an open heart. Our heart has an energetic field. It's our center of our aura. It's a very powerful thing when you live when you live with your heart open, you just experience things as they are. You know, you enjoy life. You're in the flow. You're not living in fear. You just take the things as they come instead of sleepwalking. It's just so much more joyful. You know, I don't know if you've experienced this when you've had when you've had little small moments of either dancing or maybe holding a baby or being with an animal, a pet. I have a cat. I love her so much. You know, with family members, certain moments, I'm sure you've had certain moments in your life where just experience this, this enormous amount of joy and happiness and just bliss. So when we have our open hearts, we just take things as they go. You experience and you let go. You experience and you let go. And that what that's how it is when you live from an open heart. 
you live from an open heart. It's a very magical thing. It's a very powerful thing when you are in your heart. With that being said, we want to be in an observant mode. We want to observe what's going on. And that's why meditation is very, very important. If you don't meditate, I would highly, highly suggest meditating, even if it's five minutes a day. Let me tell you, the quietness, just meditation is just kind of like... <sighs> I don't know if you if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. But let me just tell you that meditation is just just I don't know how to explain it. It just ah like it's just ah like it's just peace. Peace. So anyways, you want to observe things. You realize that you are not your thoughts. When I was younger, I always used to have oh my goodness. I used to have really bad thoughts all the time. I used to doubt myself. I used to be hard on myself. I used to say really bad, really mean things to myself, you know, and that comes from childhood and my surroundings and my caregivers and whatnot. But yeah, I had this really bad um, relationship with myself and I would let my thoughts, I would be so caught up in my head and believe whatever my thoughts were telling me, you know, and, and these thoughts, they're not mine. These are just passing by, you know, it's kind of like um, if you're in the city, if you people watch, you know, I, I, I used to like doing that. If you go to the cafe, you, you watch people come and go, you watch them from the windows and, you know, some people are on their phone, some people are laughing, some are just by themselves, some people are walking their dogs, you know, you just people watch, you observe you observe these thoughts so instead of having an attachment to these thoughts you just observe them and you let them go kind of like clouds you know they come and go they come and go like everything in life everything is in life is temporary everything comes and goes that's how you have to approach your thoughts and basically anything you know thoughts situations circumstances anything in your external external reality you just observe this actually helped me the other day where something had happened um about a week ago with my family and i was reflecting on what happened you know and my mind it just kind of automatically went to like, oh wow, why did I do that? I shouldn't have done that. I'm a bad daughter and whatnot. And then because of what I read in this book, I was like, no, wait a second. Like, no, these are not my thoughts. I'm not a bad daughter. I'm not a bad friend. I'm not a bad person. It was just one certain situation that I made a mistake, you know? And and that's how you have to see it. You have to observe. You, you are not your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. You are not what other people tell you. You are love. You are light. You are this beautiful thing. And you have to see yourself as that. You know, you have to be delicate with yourself and love yourself. Be gentle with yourself. I just wish, I just wish people would be so much more kind to themselves. And I feel like that's why there's a lot of anger and hatred out there because people don't really love themselves you know we're all so mean to each other and especially to ourselves so yeah you know just take some moments and be quiet be in the silent don't listen to music or the news or anything just like be in your own thoughts look in the mirror and get to know yourself and love yourself your features you know and so <laughs> A little, I'm over here like almost wanting to cry but <laughs> anyways like yeah um observe your thoughts do not be attached to them let them go you know just like anything else like relationships you know sometimes we think like oh we must find the one we have to be in a relationship we have to get married and you know that's cool if you want to but when it comes to this um a place from actual on a conditional love but if it's coming from this place of i'm lonely i'm desperate um you know type of love or manipulation like that's not that's not real love practice non-attachment things that are always changing things are always changing and i know it's hard i know it's hard but just enjoy the moment be in the present moment what is going on right now don't be so bothered about the past and don't be so worried about the future so what happens when we don't 
um, observe and we don't let go, what happens is that, like I said earlier, we hold on to trauma. These disturbances that happen in, um, in our external reality will stay inside of us. And so the analogy that they showed, um, that they explained in the book is having like um, thrones. Is that how you say it? Thorns. Ah, all right. Anyways, I don't know if I'm saying the right, but thrones, you know, like on roses, they're plants. Uh, on the stem, they're these sharp, prickly things. And when you, when you grab a flower, you pick it up and then like, ah, you know, like you hurt yourself. They're pointy, they're pokey, they hurt, they hurt, they're, they're sharp. You know, and so that's that's what happens. You know, we we carry them inside of us, so the trauma, the pain, the suffering, you know, suffering. And so the thing with this is that we don't have to hold on to them. We don't have to suffer. So um, what they were saying in the book is that you have two choices and one of them is to either take them out or you're going to spend the rest of your life protecting it. So... Um, I don't remember what example they gave in the book, but I want to share my example. So, for a really, really long time, I struggled with social anxiety. And I mean extreme, extreme social anxiety. Like, even with my family. Anywhere I went, I had extreme social anxiety. And so, because of that, because of that, I would always limit myself. If there were opportunities, I wouldn't take them. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And it's so sad, you know, because, you know, someone, as someone who has really big dreams and ambitions and things that they I want to do, I, I couldn't do that because of the social anxiety that I had, the low self-esteem that I had. You know, I didn't believe in myself and I, I didn't let myself be seen. That, that is what led me to play small. So instead of going for high paying jobs, I would work at factories because that's what my parents did. You know, that's what I was, that was what I was comfortable with. That's what I've been knowing basically my whole life. Another job that I would do is for example, you know, like those jobs at Amazon. I legit did stowing for like over a year. And that's because, you know, you're alone. And for me as an introvert, that was amazing. Like go to work and don't get to really interact with people. And so um, as a loner, I, I liked it, I enjoyed it, but uh, as a human, it is extremely important to make sure that you have connections and community. And so, so yeah, I just would play small and stay small, you know, and not really take chances and risk and go after opportunities because I was always trying to protect that womb. Um, my, the shame that I had inside of me, you know, and so that's just an example, you know, I could probably say a lot of examples, you could, you know, you probably can think of some examples in your life too, you know, because maybe you feel a certain way or you have a certain fear, um, that kind of hinders you from doing certain things. So going back to these decisions that you're either going to protect this womb, this pain, this hurt for the rest of your life. And yeah, you're protecting it, but at the same time, it's painful. It's kind of like you're in a toxic relationship. You know you're, this relationship is really bad. This person doesn't respect you, but yet you stay because you're lonely or, you know, whatever the reason that you're staying. It's kind of like that. You know, you're, you know better. You want to do better, but yet you don't. Going back to my social anxiety, like, um, yes, I did work on, you know, getting in my comfort zone and um, building my skills, uh, my people skills, but yet my anxiety, my anxiety was so big that I was scared. I was scared. I was scared to feel anxiety. Instead of me working through the anxiety and wanting to avoid that feeling of anxiety, um in that moment i could have just dealt with it and over time that anxiety would have went away you know it's it's kind of like deal with it now so that way you don't got to deal with it later on you know it's 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 so much more rewarding to have to go through the pain 
now feel the pain now then feel the pain later because it's just gonna have the snow effect snowball effect it's just gonna get worse and 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 worse big fucking big until it fucking explodes and I know it's hard you know I know it's hard when you have fear or some type of phobia um, some anxiety depression I know it's hard when you have these limiting beliefs this trauma inside of you and you believe you've attached yourself like i said earlier don't attach yourself to these stories but we attach ourselves to these old stories from the past and we can't we can't because like i said it's only gonna do us more harm than good so what do you choose what is your decision what how do you want to live your life do you want to continue living with these limitations these old stories these hindrance this pain these fears do you want to continue living in fear or do you want to take it out do you want to release do you want to let them go do you want to live from an open heart so yeah, so just a few words before I go. Um, as I mentioned already, practice non-attachment. Observe your thoughts. But I also want to mention, don't fight your mind. Don't fight your mind because when you fight your mind, all it's doing is you're adding more flame to the fire. You're adding more fire to the fire. You know, you, you're adding more to the the situation and you don't want to do that and that's why observing is so crucial instead of fighting your mind like oh no that's not true or blah 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 or going along with the stories don't fight with it what the job of your mind is to protect you your body is also made to protect you it has a a certain specific system inside of us you know our animal instincts our flight or flight our adrenaline certain functions happen if certain situations happen to us and our jobs of our mind is to protect us and so when you're telling when you're telling your mind like oh no i'm i'm scared of whatever you know social anxiety for example like you're asking your mind to always think of solutions of how to avoid that situation so you don't want to do that all right don't fight with your mind stop asking your mind to protect you from those certain things so what you want to do is just relax relax and release so if you feel some type of way in your body situations um you know just feel the anger your frustration the sadness the grief whatever you're feeling just relax into it don't you know if you have to scream if you have to um communicate if you have to do something to release the energy go ahead and do it but also relax you know once you've done what you needed to do relax and release relax and release you know for example if you're in the highway and someone cuts you off i know i know it's very easy to be like oh mother you know f you and whatever like i do that a lot but anyways <laughs> instead of being in that energy of like oh i can't believe that person did this and who do they think they are you know just kind of like all right, well, you know, maybe they were in a rush. Maybe they had to do something and just kind of let it go, you know? So um, whatever happens in the external reality, we cannot control that. We can't control people, situations. We can't. We just have to let them go, as I've been saying in this video. So just take a breath. Just breathe. 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 And let it go let it go <laughs> so that's basically it for this video remember that you are conscious you are the seat of the self so just observe your thoughts don't attach to it thoughts situations stop trying to control external things the only thing that you can control is yourself protect your energy if something does come up just relax and release and i know it's easier said than done i know it's easier said than done but the more you practice this the more easier it is and the less things affect you 
so so yeah i hope this is helpful for you in your journey and um you could apply it so that way you can live life free and freedom to be yourself to do whatever you want so yeah thank you for watching magical beans i love you so so much please like this video share it with anybody who needs to hear this and comment whatever you want to say you know maybe share some experiences that you've had with this um please let me know your thoughts and i'll catch you in the next one bye